Welcome to Bobo's Fried and Baked. Today we are making slow cooked barbecue ribs. I've already made the barbecue sauce. I will show you how to make that next episode actually. Today I'm showing you how to make the ribs. What you want to do is first pour your preheat your oven to 250 degrees. And then you just, once it's preheated, you want to go to your ribs. What you do is take some Worcestershire sauce. You don't want to put much on, just a little dab here, a little dab on both sides on each one. And then what you want to do is just rub them all in together like that. When it comes to the seasonings, I actually made my own out of a few different ones. You don't have to. You can just go straight from the uh, cupboard. But the seasoning I made is a teaspoon of blazing pepper bourbon, lemon, pe lemon pepper seasoning, and garlic bl blaster. This is actually from Tickle Berries. Now, what you want to do is just when it comes to it, just a little seasoning all around the top on both of them. You don't want to use a lot of seasoning because you're going to be using barbecue sauce as well. And then just, again, just give it a good rub in there. Now, when it comes to the ribs, most times when it comes to the meat, you actually want to see the seasoning on it. When it comes, But since we're, only, we're using barbecue sauce as the main, uh, seasoning, you don't want to, you want to just barely see the seasoning. Like that. If you can just barely see it, it's good. The next thing you want to do is have some diced onions on the top and your pan already, Dutch oven already preheated. Now, if you don't have a Dutch oven, you can use any kind of roaster or just a regular cooking pan with some tin foil on top. What you want to do is just make sure the, the onions are caramelized. Now what caramelized means is basically golden brown or it looks like it, like, like I honestly like you're cooking caramel. You, what you want to do is make sure you keep the onions moving. If you let them sit too long on a cast iron, they could burn or stick to the pan. And be careful with onion juice, it is like they say, it does make you cry. And now what you want to do as well before you put them in the pan is at least cut them in half. That will make sure they fit in the pan as well as reduce some of the cooking time, but you still want to put it in there for at least two to three hours. Cut them at least uh, three, four bones a piece. Kind of like one. Four. Just count to four when you see the rib and cut it. And then you're going to get it. One, two, one, two, three, four. And the end result would most likely look like this. And the same with the other one. If you can't see the bone, however, just cut where you find the least resistance. It's the best way I can tell you on that one. Because sometimes when it comes to ribs, you really can't see the bone all that well. And so you have to use the knife to find the bone. And keep going back to making sure the onions don't stick and don't burn. Okay. And before you do that again, you, since you had them on their back, you just want to drizzle a little bit seasoning on it to replace it, some of the stuff that rubbed off. But again, not much. Maybe a pinch to go for around for both. Now, you take it over here and you put them into the pan, like so. You can turn the burner off at this point because you're no longer going to be using the burner to cook with. And you just keep stacking them until you have them all in there. And make sure they're evenly stacked as evenly as you can. And make sure there's a hole right in the middle so the bottom ribs can also get some of the barbecue sauce. Now, once they're all in there, you take your barbecue sauce and you put it in there, right? Take the barbecue sauce. And just make sure you get it all around. Make sure each one has a lot of barbecue sauce on it. And make sure you get all the barbecue sauce out of the pan. 
You can insert it around the uh, barbecue, the uh, ribs, if you want. So you make sure each, so you know, each one has has it. And then you put the lid on top. And like I said, if you do not have a lid for your pan, you can use tin foil. And just make sure it is co completely covered. And you open the door and you slide it in. Now you set the timer for three hours. So, when it's done, you want to take it out of the oven and put it on the stove. You want to take a look inside. If it looks like that, you did perfect. I mean, that looks good. Now, you are ready to serve it with whatever fixings that you made, like potatoes, mac and cheese, or mixed vegetables. That was Bubba's Fried and Baked, and next week I'm going to teach you how to make sauce. Thank you very much, and see you next week.